In this video, we introduce the idea of a linear function, a very common type of function. And we'll also look at how to plot a given linear function. Linear functions are functions which have graphs that appear as straight lines. This makes a lot of sense, but what exactly is a linear function and how can we easily graph one if we've got one? So that's what this video is all about. So to the question of what is a linear function, as we've seen in some of our other videos, the graph of the function y of x equal to 3x minus 5 takes the form of a straight line. And so functions like this are often referred to line as linear functions. Now linear functions, in terms of their algebraic appearance, they only ever involve constants, like minus 5, and constant multiples of the variable raised to the first power like 3 multiplied by x. They don't have any squares and they don't have any uh, divided by x's or anything like that in them to make them nasty. Those things we call nonlinear functions. You might remember the idea of a linear equation. Uh, these also involve constants and constant multiples of a variable add together. So things like y equals mx plus c, which you may have seen before when drawing straight lines. ax plus by equals to d. Well, that's pretty much the same thing, but a different form. And we often see that when we're solving simultaneous equations. And already, uh, if you've been looking at solving equations uh, in other videos here, ax plus b equals to zero. That's a linear equation uh, in only one unknown. So let's look at this example. Which of the following uh, functions or equations are linear? So remember, we're looking for uh, sums or differences of constants and constant multiples of variables. And that's exactly what we've got in A. We've got 1 lot of y equal to 1 lot of x, just constant multiples of the variables. So that one is linear. In B, though, we've got a constant multiple of x1, but then we've got 3 divided by x2. So that's not a constant multiple of x2. Remember when we go 1 on a variable, it's the same as the, the negative 1 power. So that's not linear, that one. In C, we have a constant multiple of x plus a constant multiple of y equal to 2. That one's linear. In D, this one gives it away the square of x. That makes that nonlinear. Remember, we can only have the first power. Now, E also has a square and an s squared, so it looks immediately like it's going to be nonlinear. We've got this little note at the end that s is a constant. So if s is a constant, that's just going to be a number as well. So it's a constant multiple of x. Take away a constant multiple of y, equal to 9. So that one is linear. And what I'm going to do is add a little note at the end to say in x and y, just to emphasize that we're talking about x and y being the variables and not s. So that's a bit about what a linear function is and what isn't a linear function. Let's move on now to plotting linear functions. We want to be able to sketch graphs of these things. When we graph a linear function, we really only need two pieces of information. Um, the first option would be to have two points that are on the line, or we could also have a single point on the line and the slope or the gradient of that line. If we've got either of those two, then we're able to plot uh, the graph of that function. When we have a function, a linear function y of x, Given in this mx plus c form, we already have two, uh, one of those sets of information, the slope and also the point 0c, which is known as the vertical, in this case the y-intercept. So we've got this point slope information and we'd be able to, to plot that graph quite easily. So to plot the function, we'd start by plotting the point 0c, x equals 0 and y equals c, and then another point by moving m units up or down if it's negative, and one unit across from that original point. And then we join those two dots and extend the line infinitely in both directions. Well, not really infinitely if we're doing it, just as far as you can. Now, if you wanted to or account for mistakes or just to check your work, you could actually, actually plot a third point. It doesn't matter what point you plot, really, as long as it's part of that function's line. Uh, but one example would be to get the x-intercept, and that's the point where y is equal to 0. So you set y equal to 0 here in the equation and solve for x. That point should be on the line as well. If it's not, then you must have made a mistake and you need to go back and check your work. Okay, so here's an example. We've got the linear equation 3y equal to minus x plus 9. 
and we want to rewrite, rewrite that equation as a function in the form y of x equals mx plus c. That's just a matter of rearranging things. We need to get rid of that 3 there. So we could write that y of x is equal to, to get rid of it, divide both sides by 3. So we'd have minus 1 on 3x, or x on 3 if you like, and 9 divided by 3 is just 3. So there's our uh, linear function. From that, we can see the y-intercept and the gradient. The gradient is just that coefficient of x there, minus 1 on 3. And the y-intercept, that's going to be the y-value when x is equal to 0. When x is 0, y is equal to 3. So we've got that coordinate there, 0, 3. So part C says to use that information, what we've just found, to plot the straight line on the Cartesian plane. So I've set up a Cartesian plane, a bit rough because I'm just sketching, uh, on this next slide. Now we need to use the information. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot that point 0, 3, the y-intercept. So that's at x equals 0 and up here at y equal to 3. So that should be one point on our line there. Then we have a slope of minus 1 on 3. Now you can either think of that as moving down 1 third and across 1, or another way to do it is to go down 1 and across 3. So if we move down 1 and across 3, we're going to be roughly here. So we've got our two points, and now we can go ahead and join those up with a nice straight line if you like. Okay. And there we go. So our straight line going through the two points that we've just figured out and all the way through. Now the last thing that we're asked to do is to check the result by determining the x-intercept and plotting it on the graph. So the x-intercept, remember, is when we have uh, y equal to 0. So we need to solve 0 equal to minus a third x plus 3 which we can rearrange to get minus a third x equals minus 3 and finally x equal to 9 by multiplying both sides by minus 3. So we need y equals 0 and x equals 9 which if you come back over here we can see is exactly where it's passing through the x axis as we'd hope for our x intercept. So there we go, there's our first straight line uh, graph for our straight line function. All right, same kind of example. Now that you've seen me do one, give yourself a moment to try this one out for yourself and see how you go. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and started this one off. Y of x I get by rearranging the equation, taking minus, um, subtracting 2x from both sides. Y of x is minus 2x plus 4. Then I can read straight off that that the slope is minus 2. And the y-intercept is going to be at y equals 4 and x equals 0. So that's my two pieces of information I'm going to use in part C to plot the graph of this, of this linear function. So to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is plot my y-intercept, which is at x equals 0 and up at y equal to 4. There we have that. And the slope was minus 2. So it's a negative, so that means we need to go down by 2 and across by 1 giving me that point there. Then I need to draw my line through those. Okay, just like that. So we've got our line through our points. And jumping back, checking the result by determining the x-intercept. And the x-intercept, of course, when y is equal to 0, minus 2x plus 4. Rearranging, we get minus 4 equal to minus 2x. And finally, x is equal to 2. So we should find that our graph is going through x equals 2, and there it is right there, going through our x-intercept as expected. So this one looks okay as well. We've checked it out. So that's a couple of examples of, given a linear function or a linear equation, turning that into a plot. So in this video, we've introduced the idea of a linear function itself, and also seen a little bit about what isn't linear. And we've looked at the terms intercept and gradient, and we saw how to sketch the plot of a given linear function.